All right, my little flamingos. I guess I miss you even more today than I did yesterday. How about that snow? That was pretty cool. Not only did we get a day off, we got snow. But we didn't get enough to do. Do you want to build a snowman? We didn't get enough of that. I'm going to watch Frozen 2 tomorrow, so don't anyone ruin it for me. So what happened in our store yesterday? Well, James ended up with a bag from a really weird, creepy little guy. I asked you guys what you thought was in the bag. I got an alligator, some peaches, both good guesses. Both were mentioned in the text, but these are magical. I'm thinking James and the, oh no, Jack and the Beanstalk maybe. Don't know? Well, I do know I've read the story before. But anyway, I miss you guys. So today I'm gonna read you four five and six chapters. And then I'm going to ask you some questions and I want some responses. I got a couple yesterday. I'd love some more today. Shout out number four, number 13. Hmm. And I know somebody else did. I promise our shout out tomorrow to everybody who did it. I'm going to use your numbers and not your name. So in case somebody else sees it, they, they won't know. So James, just got a bag of something from some strange little man. His poor parents have died and he's living with Aunt Spiker and Aunt Sponge who are, kind of remind us of our Cinderella sisters. Not very nice, not very nice. Anyway, here we go. Chapter four. James Henry Trotter stood there clutching the bag and staring at the old man. And now the old man said, all you've got to do is this. Listen very carefully. Take a large jug of water and pour all the little green things into it. Then slowly, one by one, add 10 hairs from your own head. That sets them off. It gets them going. In a couple of minutes, the water will begin to froth and bubble ferociously. And as soon as that happens, you most quickly drink it all down. The whole jug full in one gulp. And then, my dear, you will feel it churning and boiling inside your stomach. And steam will start coming out of your mouth. And immediately after that, marvelous things will start to happen for you. Unbelievable things. And you will never, ever be miserable again in your life. Because you are miserable, aren't you? You needed, you needn't tell me. I know all about it. Now off you go and do exactly as I say. And don't whisper a word of this to those horrible two aunts of yours. Not a word. And don't let those little green things get away from you either. Because if they do escape, then they will be working their magic upon somebody else instead of you. And that isn't what you want at all, is it, dear? Whoever they meet first, be it a bug, an insect, animal, or tree, that will be the one that gets the full power of their magic. So hold the bag tight. Do not tear the paper. Off you go. Hurry up. Don't wait. Now's the time. Hurry. And with that, the old man turned away and disappeared into the bushes. I don't know about you, but something tells me he's not going to follow the directions. When do people ever follow directions in a book? They always do something silly. I think there might have been some foreshadowing there. Let us see. Chapter five. The next moment, James was running back towards the house as fast as he could. He would do all of the things in the kitchen, he told himself. If he could only get there without Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker seeing him. He was terribly excited. He flew through the long grass and the stinging nettles 
not caring whether he got stung or not on his bare knees. And in the distance, he could see Aunt Spiker and Aunt Sponge sitting in their chairs with their backs towards him. He swerved away from them so to go around from the other side of the house. But then, suddenly, just as he was passing underneath the old peach tree that stood in the middle of this yard, his foot slipped. And he fell flat on the grass. The paper bag burst open and hit the ground. And the thousands of tiny little green things were scattered in all directions. James immediately picked himself up onto his hands and knees and started searching around for the precious treasure. What was this? Who they were sinking into the soil. He could actually see them wriggling and twisting and as they burrowed down their way down, downward into the hard earth. At once he reached out his hand to pick up some of them before it was too late. But they disappeared right underneath his fingers. He went after some of the other the same thing happened. He began scrambling around frantically in an effort to catch hold of those that were left, but they were too quick for him. Each time the tip of his fingers were just about to touch one of them, they vanished into the earth. And soon, in the space of only a few seconds, every single one of them was gone. James felt like crying. He would never get them back now. They were lost, lost, lost forever, he thought. But where had they gone to? And why in the world had they been so eager to push down into the earth like that? What were they after? There was nothing down there. Nothing except the roots of an old peach tree and a whole lot of earthworms, centipedes, and insects living in the soil. But what was it the old man had said? Whoever they meet first, be a bug, insect, animal, or tree, that will be the one who gets the full power of the magic. <gasps> Good heavens, thought James. What is going to happen in the case if they do meet an earthworm or a centipede or a spider? And what if they do go to the roots of the peach tree? Get up at once, you lazy beast, a voice loudly shouted it to James' ears. James glanced up and saw Aunt Spiker standing above him, grim, tall, and bony, glaring at him through her steeled, glassed spectacles. Get over there immediately and finish chopping the logs, she ordered. Aunt Sponge, fat, plump, and a jellyfish came waddling up behind her sister to see what was going on. Why don't we just lower the boy down there in the well bucket and leave him there for the night, she suggested. That ought to teach him about being lazy and laying around all day. Ooh, that's very good, Weezer, my dear Sponge. But let's make him finish chopping up the wood first. Be off with you at once, you hideous little brat, and do some work. Slowly, sadly, poor James got up off the ground and went back to the wood pile. Oh, if only he hadn't slipped and fallen and dropped that precious bag. All hope of a happier life had gone completely now. Today, and tomorrow, and the next day, and all the others, as well, would be nothing but punishment, pain, unhappiness, and despair. He picked up the chopper and was just about to start chopping away again when he heard a shout behind him that made him stop and turn. Chapter six. Wonder what it is that's making him turn around. Got any guesses? Yell them out. It's the only time I'm ever going to tell you to yell out the answers, right? I'm not going to tell anyone not to yell out the answers. Go ahead and yell it out. What do you think it is? Could be the aunt. See, I knew you were going to say aunt. What else could it be? Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't think of that. Mm, let's see. Sponge, sponge, come here and look at this at once. At what? It's a peach. 
Aunt Spiker shouted. A what? A peach! Right up there on the highest branch. Can't you see it? I think you might be mistaken, my dear Spiker. That miserable old tree has never, ever had a peach on it. There's one on it now, Sponge. Look for yourself. You're teasing me, Spiker. You're making my mouth water on purpose. And there's nothing to put into that. There has that, why that tree has never even had a blossom on it, let alone a peach. Right up on the highest branch, you say? I can't see. Very funny, ha <laughs> ha. Good gracious me. Well, I've been blown. There really is a peach up there. <gasps> oh, a nice one too, Aunt Spiker said. A beauty, a beauty, Aunt Sponge cried out. At this point, James slowly put down his chopper and turned and looked across at the two women who were standing underneath the peach tree. Something is about to happen, he told himself. Something peculiar is about to happen at any moment. He hadn't the faintest idea about what it might be, but he could feel it in his bones that something was going to happen soon. He could feel it in the air around him. In the sudden stillness that had fallen upon the garden, James tiptoed up to the tree. The aunts were not talking now. They were just standing there staring at the peach. There was no sound anywhere, not even the breath of a wind and overhead, the sun blazed down upon them out of a deep blue sky. Ooh, it looks ripe to me, Aunt Spiker said, breaking the silence. Then why don't we eat it, Aunt Sponzer suggested, licking her thin little lips. <laughs> we can each have half. Hey, you, James, come over here. Climb up this tree. James came running over. I want you to pick that peach up there on the highest branch, Aunt Sponger said. Can you see it? Yes, Aunt Sponger, I, I, I can see it. And don't you dare eat any of it yourself. Your Aunt Spiker and I are going to have it between us right here, half and half. Go up there. Go up, up again. James crossed over the tree trunk. Stop! Aunt Spiker said quickly, hold everything. She was staring up into the branches with her mouth wide open and her eyes bulging like she had seen a ghost. Look! She said, look, Sponge, look. What's the matter with you, Aunt Sponge demanded. It's growing, Aunt Spiker cried. It's getting bigger and bigger. What is? The peach, of course. You're joking. Well, look for yourself. But dear Spiker, that's perfectly ridiculous. That's impossible. That's, that's, now wait just a minute. No, 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 that can't be right. No, no, yeah. Great Scott, that thing is really growing. <gasps> it's nearly twice as big already, Aunt Spiker shouted. Can't be true. It's true. It must be a miracle. Watch it, watch it, watch it. I am watching it. Good heavens alive, Spiker cried. I can actually see the thing bulging and swelling before my eyes. That's it for today. What's going to happen? Can you guess what's making those, that peach grow? Hmm. Is James going to pick the peach? Are the sisters going to eat the peach? These are things I want to know. Inquiring minds like Miss Ebert want to know. So, going to ask you, what do you think is going to happen next? Think back to stories we've read before. We're getting to that point, right? Who's our characters? James, Aunt Spiker, and Aunt Sponge. Why do they act the way they do? What motivates them to do what they're doing? I'd like a little write-up. You can send it to me on Class Dojo. You can send me a picture. If you can figure out how to videotape and send me the videotape, I'd like that too. I'd also like for you guys to go on Reflex or iStations. I only had a few people go on. I want to see more. You need to practice your facts. When we get back together again, I want to make sure we're ready to go. I miss you guys. And I will post another video tomorrow. 
I'm going to post a video in the afternoon. We're going to start our science fair experiment. I got me some sweet potatoes. Remember that video? Where the girl grew the sweet potatoes? The organic and the non-organic? If not, you can look it up on YouTube and see it. And I'm going to do my own video tomorrow. Anyway, I miss you and I love you. And I will send another video this afternoon. And send me some work. Keep me busy. I miss you guys.